All entities in a game are usually called game objects, everything from persons to trees to chests. We can hold each of these types in their own separate array, then when we want to do operations such as handle player input, we can loop over all of the persons. Likewise for drawing, since all of our game objects are drawable, we can loop over each type and draw it to the screen. The problem here is that we can't reuse data across our different types. Let's reevaluate our game objects and see if we can organize their internals a bit better. Suppose we take the position and sprite components out of our person, tree, and chest and put it into its own array. After all, position and sprite are all we need to draw to the screen. Then we can rewrite our three for loops into a single for loop. Now that we've pulled our position and sprite components out of the three objects, we don't really have game objects anymore. Rather, we have some spare parts that represented part of a person, or part of a tree, or part of a chest. We can call these components as well, and just like our position and sprite components, store these into their own arrays. So now we have multiple arrays of components, and we are able to loop over these at our own discretion. We can view an entire entity by collecting all of its components at a specific index. The problem here is that not all components are used by every entity. Sometimes we have trees, sometimes we have people, and sometimes we have chests. So what we can do instead is turn our array index into what we will call an entity ID, and use that in a hash map to access components and also check if they exist. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in our engine folder is make a new folder, and we'll call this one ECS. And in here, we're going to make another file called ecs.go. This is going to hold our entire ECS implementation that we can use from our actual game. Now let's open that up. We'll declare this as package ECS. Then we can declare our import statements. And the one we're going to use in here is reflect. Next, we'll define our entity ID. And we'll just call this ID, and we'll, we'll uh, designate it as a uint32. First, we'll define an engine struct, and this will hold a reg parameter. And the reg parameter will be basically a mapping from a component type to a storage that holds all of the instances of that component. We'll also have an ID counter, which we'll use to generate our entity IDs. Next, let's build a constructor for our engine. Next, we can declare a basic storage struct. This will be used to hold all of our components for a particular type. And in here, we'll just have a map from ID to a generic interface. And the interface can hold anything, basically. So in there, the interface will represent whatever component we're storing in this basic storage. Next, let's write a new basic storage constructor. Next, we can define a read function. We'll pass in an ID to this, and then we'll return an interface, which represents the value being returned. And we'll also return a bool to indicate if the uh, value is there. And the implementation for this will just be a simple lookup into the hash map. Next, we'll implement a write function. And that'll take an ID for where we want to store the component, as well as the component value that we're trying to store. And we'll just write this directly to our hash map. Let's also implement a component interface. All of our components will need to implement this interface so that we can use them internally here. This will just have one function called component set, and that'll be used for whenever we want to read a value out of a storage. We need to be able to set a pointer to that component so that we can return the value in kind of a type safe way. Next, we'll write a package level read function, and this will take in the engine that we're operating on, the ID, and then the value that we want to read uh, that component into. We'll also have a package level write function, which will do the same thing, but instead of reading the value into our component, we will write the value to the storage. Next, we'll write a package level each function. This will also operate on the engine struct. The goal of this function is basically to provide a simple way to do a for loop over a particular component type. So the T, that, the T parameter that we pass into the each function will specify which component type we want to loop over. Next, we'll specify a lambda function f, which, which will do some work over every single element in that uh, component list. The general structure for the read is going to be get storage and then read the value from the storage. The general structure for the write is going to be get storage and then write the value to the storage. Then the general structure for the each function is going to be to get the storage, then loop over the storage with whatever function was passed in. Let's write a function now called get storage, and this will this will be used to get our basic storage object out of our engine. First, we'll have to generate a specific name for each component type that we're trying to store. 
So we'll, we'll write another function called name, and that will be used to generate the string that is used to store that basic storage into our engine struct. Then with that name, we'll basically pull out the storage and return it. But if we're unable to get the storage, it means that the storage has never been built yet. So we'll just create a new basic storage in the event that that happens. Next we'll write, next we'll write our name function. And we're going to use reflect here to get the type of the value passed in and then convert that to a string. And then because that point that type that type could be a pointer or a regular value, we're kind of going to uh, do some slicing on the string to uh, return just the base type without the pointer. Now we can implement our read function, and we'll, we'll use get storage to get our storage out, and then we will have uh, we'll call our storage .read on that ID and return the value that was returned. This is also where we're going to use the component set interface definition. Because the val passed into this function is implemented by the component interface, it has this component set method on it. So we can use that to set the val struct to whatever data was pulled out of the storage. Next we can implement our write function. We'll do the same thing as read where we get the storage and then we'll just call the storage.write function on it. Next we can implement our each function. We'll get the storage and then we'll read the storage.list object and loop over it. And then for every element in that loop, we're just going to uh, execute the function that we passed in. In our engine, we also need to implement this new ID function. That's gonna use our ID counter. It's gonna increment it and then return uh, the previous ID that it used to be. Now in our client main.go, we can define our engine by doing ecs.new engine. And in here, we're going to need to convert uh, all of our people's array into um, using the engine instead now. So for the keybind struct, we'll just convert this to a component by having it implement this component set interface function. Then we, then, then we can create a new type and we'll call this one sprite. And this will just uh, kind of be composed with the pixel.sprite pointer. And we'll also make this a component as well. Finally, we want to pull position out, but we're actually going to call this transform. And this will just have an X and Y position uh, in world space. And we're going to make this transform a component as well. Now that we've broken our person into multiple components, we no longer need the person object, nor do we need the person constructor. Now we can rewrite our draw sprites, sprites function. And in here we're going to use our ecs.each functionality uh, to loop over all of the sprite components. And then we'll define our function that we want to uh, execute on every sprite. First we'll get the sprite by doing a type assertion uh, on this a interface object into a sprite object. Next we want to read the transform component for this entity ID. And if we weren't able to get the transform for some reason, we'll just return out of this uh, particular this particular function. Then we'll convert the transform into a pixel dot vector, and then we'll do sprite dot draw on the window uh, for for uh, pixel identity matrix scaled by two and then moved by our position that we found earlier. Now let's rewrite our handle input function. This will also take the engine uh, as an input as well. And like before, we're going to do an ecs.each here, but over the key binds now. And we'll copy all of our input handling that we had before into our, uh, into our lambda function. And then we can get the key binds object for this particular uh, loop by doing a.keybinds. And then we also need the transform component as well, so we'll pull that out too. And then, we'll, then we will rewrite this to use keybinds instead of p.keybinds. And instead of changing uh, p dot position, we want to change the transform component. And now that we've changed the transform component, or rather we've changed a local copy of the transform component, so we need to write this back to our ECS storage object. So we'll do that by doing an ECS dot write on an engine for this ID uh, with our transform component. Now that we've written our own handle input function, let's replace the uh, for loop over people with uh, our handle input system. 
instead of looping over our people array, let's just call our draw sprites uh, system. Next we, need to, next we need to deprecate our usage of this people array uh, and convert it to use our um, engine that we had built at the top here. So let's change our spawn point to be a transform rather than a pixel.vector. Now let's construct our first entity, and this will be our man. So we'll get an ID from engine.newID, and then we'll do ecs.write on the engine with the man ID, and we'll pass in a sprite, and we'll pass in the man sprite specifically. Next we want to do the same thing, but with a different component. Let's pass in the transform component, spawn point. And then finally we want to pass in the keybinds component. So we can copy that from our previous code, and then paste it up here. So this will create a uh, new component for our man ID, uh, that is keybinds. Now we can kind of copy paste our code and instead of using man ID, let's just change everything to hat man. Then we can delete our old constructor. Now instead of our camera position following the index zero of our people's array, let's have it follow the transform component of our hat, of our regular man. So to do that, we'll read out the transform component of our regular man. And if we're able to find it, then we will just uh, have the camera follow that position. Cool, let's start our server now so we can launch our client. Let's launch our client. And I had forgotten to uh, import the ECS package. So let's import that now. All right, and everything's running just as it was before. But now everything's using our ECS system, or rather our ECS storage. We've kind of broken out the two uh, gameplay logic loops, uh, such as handling input and drawing, into their own systems. So we're getting closer to an ECS structure. Uh, so that'll be hopefully good for us to uh, build a more scalable game. So as you see in our handle input function here, uh, what we'll do a lot of times is we'll be writing this ECS each functions. And in those, we will have uh, kind of pulling data out, doing some sort of transformation on it, and then writing the data back. And then in the draw sprites function, we do something very similar, but instead of writing stuff back, all we have to do is pull data out and then draw it to the screen. So we don't actually have to do this um, kind of read, transform, write uh, loop that we do in the handle input function. Well, that's all I have for today. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe.